Did you know that Proverbs 17 verse 22 says that a happy heart is good medicine? God wants you to have a happy heart and a joy-filled mind. As we approach his word, open up your heart. Let him flood your heart with joy, his joy, which is our strength. Precious Heavenly Father, we just open up our heart right now to you. We want you to flood our hearts with your joy, your peace. Lord, that good medicine that does us good from the inside out. Lord, we receive it. We thank you for it. Lord, we believe your Holy Spirit is right here with us, speaking to us. Lord, touching our lives, healing everything that's wrong, correcting us, putting us in the place where we can receive from you and grow in you. All in Jesus' name, amen. We begin our new series called Wisdomology. We're going to get into part one here, which is the principal thing, Wisdomology. Talking about wisdom, you know, kids can amaze us with their wise responses, can't they? Jennifer was asked to finish this statement. If the shoe fits, she said, buy it in every color. <laughs> Five-year-old Daniel was asked, what should a man take with him if he needed to stay alive for many days in the woods? He thought and he thought, he figured and he figured, and he said, hmm, he should take his wife. All the ladies said, amen. Wise young man, wise young man. What in the world is wisdom? Is it book smarts? Is it investment smarts? Or how about IQ? You know, a lot of people think it's IQ. Does wisdom come from an elite education or maybe it comes by much worldly experience? Are scientists or professors wise? Is being an intellectual elitist the pinnacle of wisdom? If you invented Facebook or Tesla, does that make you the great wise one? Hmm. How about this? If one died on a cross for all of humanity, and yet many of those same people refuse to accept him as their savior, is that wisdom? Many businesses would say that the, the PE or the price to earnings ratio is it's unacceptable. It's not profitable and therefore not wise. But God, God so loved the world that he was willing to sacrifice his only begotten son to save you, to save me. Now that is God's love. And that is the core of wisdomology. In this opening segment, we will look at the principal thing. Part one, the principal thing. I love wisdom. I just absolutely love wisdom. It has profoundly revolutionized my life. To be transparent, I've been guilty of great foolishness, stupid decisions, but God's wisdom has rescued me, corrected me, helped me, transformed me, and grown me day after day. I love wisdom. My marriage to Pam is all because of God's gracious wisdom in my life. Because of God's wisdom, I get what Jesus deserves. Now, just that alone should have you longing for, craving for, wanting more wisdom. Wisdom is a master key. I've had undeserved successes in my life because of God's wisdom. It is the golden key. I've been healed on various occasions, from various sicknesses in my life through God's wisdom. You may need a healing in your body right now, but if you're disrespectful of God's wisdom, you hold his healing power in contempt. What you fail to understand is that God's healing power, his miracle working power works in tandem with his wisdom. In fact, all of God's power works in tandem with his wisdom. Now that is wisdomology. I live debt-free all because of God's mercy and wisdom. I sleep peaceful and sound. Why? Because of God's great wisdom. I've been forgiven and restored because of God's wisdom. God helps me to help others all with his wisdom. God's taught me how to pray, how to worship, how to give, how to rest, how to live with 
his wisdom. I even vacation with God's wisdom. I buy clothes with God's wisdom. Look, the other day, Pam and I, we, we have to attend a few weddings coming up. And so the other day, she was saying that she needed a new dress. Well, we prayed. That's the first thing we did. We looked to God, the source of all wisdom, when we said, God, direct us to the right dress. I know, I was helping pray for that. God, direct us to the right dress and give us a great value at the right store. So we went out and within minutes, we found Pam a beautiful dress and the manager of the store gave us this crazy great deal. I ended up getting 80% off and the whole process took, that's this is the big miracle, took less than 20 minutes, which come on you guys, that in itself is a miracle and therefore wisdomology at work. No wonder I'm so excited to take you on this journey into the exciting world of wisdomology. It truly is the life-changing basics of life and the ability to live above the storm, every storm. I hear so many Christians talk about God's love or talk about God's grace, His amazing grace, powerful, wonderful stuff, beautiful attributes and virtues. Absolutely. But listen to this. None of these powerful forces are a substitute for the principal thing. That's right. God's word tells us that there is one principal thing and wisdom is the principal thing. Do you know what principle means? It means the most important, the most consequential or influential thing. If you were making an apple pie, for example, you'd probably consider apples the principal thing. Well, God tells us in his word that if you want to make a life, if you want to make a marriage, create a marriage, a family, a business, if you want to have a career, a dream, wisdom is the principal thing. That's right. Wisdom is the most consequential ingredient. Let me say it this way. Without wisdom, your life will fail. I guarantee it. Regardless of how nice of a person you are, you could be the most beautiful, wonderful, nice, loving person. But without the principal thing, you will fail. Consider this. If you were going on a trip from point A to point B in your brand new car, let's say it's a top of the line Ferrari, what is the principal thing? Is it the steering wheel? Maybe is it the engine? What if I told you no? The answer is even more basic than all of that. It's the road. It's the highway. You're not going anywhere without the road. Wisdom is that basic and fundamental to your life. It's the road. Proverbs 3 verse 17 says that wisdom's way is a highway of pleasantness. That's what we all need. We need the highway. What is the main thing in life? The principal thing? The highway, Proverbs 4, verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. If your marriage is failing, it's probably not a love problem. It's a wisdom problem. If your business is failing, it's not a money or a customer problem. You have a wisdom problem. Are you failing at school? It's not an academic or an intellectual problem. It's a wisdom problem. If you're failing at sports, hockey, football, it's not an athletic problem. You guessed it. You have got a wisdom problem because wisdom is the principal thing. We've got professors in elite schools who probably have a decent IQ, but they're teaching students anti-Semitism. Why? They have a wisdom problem problem. These professors are void of wisdom. They don't have the principal thing. So every day they live without the highway of life. They desperately need wisdomology. But until they repent, they teach their own ugly misery. As we pursue the principal thing, let's define wisdom for this wisdomology class, okay? Wisdom is not just a thing it's not just some quotient or measurement of inner discernment. No, 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 no. Listen to this. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24 says, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Christ is the wisdom of God. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 30. 
Christ Jesus who became to us wisdom from God. So listen to this. Wisdom is not just a thing. Wisdom from God is actually a being. It's a person, the person of Christ Jesus, the anointed one. Jesus is the very embodiment, the personification of God's wisdom. Jesus is the word. Now look at what we hear in John 1, starting at verse 1. In the beginning, before all time, was the word, Christ, and the word was with God, and the Word was God Himself. He was continually existing in the beginning, co-eternally with God. All things were made by Him and came into existence through Him. And without Him, that's Jesus, not even one thing was made that has come into being. Before anything existed and before all time was the Word, which is God. The Word. And 1 Corinthians tells us that Jesus is the wisdom of God. Therefore, the Word is the wisdom. The Word is the wisdom. This is so important. Say it out loud. The Word of God is the wisdom of God. Say it again. The Word of God is the wisdom of God. See, this is so critical to your life. This is truly wisdomology the principal thing. If you focus on love, but ignore the principal thing. You see, love is so important. It's great. God is love, the Bible says. But if you focus on love, but ignore the principal thing, then you end up spinning the wheels of your Ferrari in a swamp somewhere with no highway, no road to get anywhere. Love is not the road. Wisdom is the road. Wisdom is the highway. Some of you right at this very moment are beginning to understand why your finances are such a mess, why your marriage is struggling. No matter how much love you pour and you pour into it, your marriage keeps struggling. Raising Children 101 is the realization that 100% love plus no wisdom is 101 crazy town. It's a hard pill to swallow, but it's an epiphany that will save and promote your children's destiny for good. You see, God's word is God's wisdom and therefore the principal thing, the foundation. Listen to this. God's word is the container of the manifestation. It's the container of the goodness, the good stuff that you love. It's the container, the wisdom of God the originator of all creation. So how do we even begin to imagine that we could replace true wisdom with intellect, knowledge, formulas, and truly live, let alone live life strong? The great con job is subjective morality, worldly knowledge independent of God's wisdom, his absolutes. That con job is one of the ultimate deceptions in this world. Ravi Zacharias, the late Christian apologist who was investigated for immoral choices, ironically spoke this truth in a paradoxical twist. He said, consequences are bound to the choices you make. You can have your choice, but you cannot choose your consequence. Mm -hmm. Very powerful and very sad at the same time. Wisdom guides our choices for life. Claiming to have wisdom, but failing to use wisdom is surely the most sad contradiction of all life. Humanity has a track record of doing all kinds of things without wisdom. That produces a track record of failure, brokenness, offense, hurt, divorce, disaster, even war. Shall I go on? Without wisdom, I can guarantee you this. You and I will fail and it will be miserable. I can guarantee it. Without wisdom, any of us, all of us will end up choosing failure, even death. So who's with me, right? Hopefully you're all shouting, no way, I'm with wisdom, I'm with wisdom. Who in the world wants to sign up for massive, extensive failure? Nobody but we do it all the time. Every time we make decisions, choices independent of wisdom. Every time we buy the lie that knowledge is independent of the absolutes of truth, we lose. Which is why it's imperative for you to understand there is no, simply no substitute for wisdom. 
God's wisdom, because wisdom is the principal thing. That's right. It's been said that the gifts and talents of fools make them dangerous. When a created being begins to invent his own manual for life, he's forsaken truth. He's forsaken God's wisdom. Wisdom is not knowledge. Knowledge is intellectual. It's informational and based on the facts. So knowledge can be a good thing as long as it's subject to the principal thing. See, there's an order here. Wisdom always comes first. Knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is not putting it in a fruit salad. <laughs> Wisdom is based in truth, not preference. It's unchanging. It's unmovable. It's absolute. And that means it is eternal. Knowledge can change in a split second, just like that. It's based on experience, data, our senses, our feelings. Schools and higher learning basically teach knowledge, the knowing of something. Science is the study of systemized knowledge, not wisdom, knowledge. And that's why science is always evolving and changing and being updated. It's adaptive change. God's wisdom never, ever, ever changes. It's absolute. Did you know until 1875, even science didn't know where babies came from? Leonardo da Vinci, he didn't know where babies came from. Isaac Newton, he didn't know. But God knew. God knew you before you were even conceived, Jeremiah 1.5 says. How's that for wisdom? Wisdom is in perfect alignment with truth, the straight edge of life, the invisible foundation that holds up the visible. To make decisions for life, strength, joy, and blessing, that requires wisdom as the highway. You got to have the highway to get from A to B. Let's get some wisdom on how to handle life, how to work the principal thing. Come on, let's get practical. How do we work wisdom? That's right. Wisdom wants to work for you. Did you know that? Yes, God's wisdom wants to go to work for you and help you in your life. You can let wisdom help you handle your life, your marriage, your children, your finances, your career, every part of your life, your dreams, your ambitions, your health. Let wisdom help you. So let's get super practical and try to establish in our thinking the principle of the matter. Now, I like my tea. Earl Grey, that's my favorite tea. Pam calls out, hey, she says, would you like some tea, Stephen? I'm upstairs and I'm like, yes, please. That sounds awesome. For the next few minutes, I hear some stirring downstairs. So I just continue to study, do my reading. Finally, Pam arrives and she goes, here's your tea, your Earl Grey. Now, if you know anything about tea, you know it's got to be very, very hot to be very good. That's the way the tea leaves are activated to infuse into the water with the wonderful flavors. Now, imagine if Pam arrived with the good hot tea and just began to pour it out for me. I'm reaching out for it. She goes, here's my tea. It's like, ouch, third degree burns. Am I getting what I want? Yes. But is it a blessing to me? Absolutely not. I'm getting burned here. Think about it. The blessing is not a blessing to me. It's actually hurting me. Look, my hand's getting burnt. It's a curse to me. It's not good. The blessing is not a good thing. Every good thing, every blessing, every manifestation of a promise, it must be delivered with a foundation, a principle, a basis, a bottom, a floor, or some grounding. Think of a tree. It's got to have ground. A forest has got to have ground, the very basic thing for it to grow in. So now watch how this works. When I say, Pam, I'll have some tea, please independent of the principle, which is the cup, the blessing burns me. Like, that's not a good thing. How about if I wanted some power? Hey, I'll have some power, please. Independent of wisdom, the principle, it corrupts. How about if I wanted some wealth, some money? I'd like some money, please. Independent of the wisdom, what's it do? It ruins me. I get arrogant. I get proud. It ruins my life. The Bible says prosperity ruins the fool. How about if I want some food? I'm hungry. I'd like some food, please. Independent of wisdom, it ends up controlling and mastering my life. I become a slave to my appetite, and we know where that goes. 
What if I want some freedom? Freedom could never go wrong, could it? Independent of wisdom, it brings me back into bondage is what Galatians chapter 5, verse 13 says. It's got to have a road. Even freedom has got to have a highway, a road. I'll have some intimacy. Uh, this will speak to a few of you. I'll have some intimacy, please. Independent of the boundaries and the borders of true marriage, the wisdom of marriage, it destroys and it leaves people broken, feeling abused, neglected. I'd like to have some elite education, please. Well, education is a good thing. How could that ever go wrong? I could tell a lot of you are kind of smirking. I'd like some elite education, please. Independent of God's wisdom, of the truth, we become Gnostics, denying the existence of sin, deifying humanism, and pitying the ignorant. You cannot substitute exercise for wisdom. You can't substitute wealth for wisdom. You can't substitute hard work for wisdom. You can't substitute knowledge, education for wisdom. Knowing Jesus as Savior is not a substitute for knowing Jesus as the wisdom of God. Did you get that? Knowing Jesus as Savior is not a substitute for knowing Jesus as the wisdom of God, a completely wonderful other facet of his character. In other words, being converted is not the same as being discipled, being trained to reign. Discipleship teaches wisdom, boundaries, the ability to contain, to manage the blessing, to hold on to and handle the hot good stuff, the blessings. We have too many Christians living off of an experience and not abiding in Christ. Let his word, his wisdom live in you. That requires application according to John 15, verse 11. Jesus said, I've told you these things. What things was he talking about? His word, his wisdom. He said, I've told you these things. He said, I'm giving you wisdom so that my joy and my delight may be in you and that your joy your joy may be full. He wants your cup full, but you got to have a cup to get it full. You see, God wants you filled up to the full with the good stuff, but how can he fill you to the full if you don't have a cup or if your vessel is not intact? Wisdom holds the manifestation of what you hope for. I got to say it again. Wisdom will hold the manifestation of what you hope for, what you believe for, and what you're praying for. You may be praying for something that you still don't have the cup of wisdom to hold it. God can give you the car, but if you run out of the highway, your blessing becomes a tragedy. Look at the children of Israel in the promised land. They lost the wisdom and therefore lost their lives. They neglected God's wisdom and lost their lives. How many parents have lost the blessing of their children because they forgot that wisdom is the principal thing. Love is not a substitute for wisdom. Yes, love is the greatest, but wisdom is the principal thing. Never forget that. Prayer is not a substitute for wisdom. How can you pray if you don't have wisdom? God's wisdomology is for you. God gives wisdom to those who ask. Thank God for that. Proverbs 8, verse 35, For whoever finds me, wisdom finds life and draws forth and obtains favor from God. Look at that. Verse 36, But he who misses me or sins against me, wrongs and injures himself, all who hate me, love and court death. Man, that's strong language. Of course, you don't want to date death, do you? You don't want to burn your hand on the blessing. Is that possible, Pastor Stephen? Well, of course it is. You just saw it. Riches without wisdom destroy fools. Look again at the power of wisdom being the principal thing, the basic thing to life. Proverbs 4, starting at verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Look at this verse. next verse, 8. Exalt her. That's talking about wisdom. And she will promote you. She will bring you to honor when you embrace her. Where's your life going right now? Are you on the highway or do you feel like you're stuck in a ditch somewhere? 
Don't let the negative voices condemn you right now. The enemy is afraid of you getting God's wisdom. He's terrified of that. If you start promoting wisdom, then wisdom will promote you. Can I say that again? If you promote wisdom, wisdom will promote you. Maybe you feel like every time something good is poured out, you're missing it. Every time a blessing's being poured out, it's like it's going through your fingers or worse. You even feel like you're being scorched by it, burned by it. Wisdom is the answer for your life. God has his wisdom for you. Are you struggling with anger right now? Maybe rage. Maybe you just keep falling into immoral lifestyles. Maybe immorality, lust is your problem and you just feel like it's beating you up and taking over your life. Have you ever been getting burned over and over and over and over? Maybe you're waiting and hoping life will just change. Maybe you feel like if only your luck would change, everything would get better. No, my friend, no. You need the principal thing. You were made for the principal thing, God's wisdom. You need Jesus, the manifest person of wisdom in your life now. If you want to choose the principle, establish your whole life on God's wisdom. I believe you're at a pivotal moment right now. Pray this with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I need you. I need your wisdom in my life. Forgive me of all my sins. You died on the cross for me, rose up from the grave. Lord, come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Direct my steps from now on. Give me your wisdom. In your name, Jesus, amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. Get our free app with the daily prayer and join us for this Tuesday Talks for an exciting, interactive question and answer and prayer time where we talk about what's important to you. At Living Room Church, you are loved. And together, we live life strong.